Over the winter, I noticed that this Moride uh, X Factor cross member set had gone on sale. Uh, just watching a couple of different things on my wish list, so I decided to pull the trigger. And after using the camper a couple times this year, I've decided before my next trip to try and install it. So this is what it looks like out of the box. It is uh, definitely a beefy piece of steel. It uh, you know has a hefty weight to it. Comes with very uh, nice grade bolts for everything and the basic idea is that this mounts between your um, brackets that you know your suspension attaches to underneath the camper and those receive a lot of force uh, especially when you're making tight turns and that sort of thing and they're only just welded to the i-beam that runs underneath the camper so there's not a ton of support on them and they can really take quite a twist um, especially like in backing and that sort of thing so looking at the bolts themselves, nice grades on them. They are um, you know, embossed here to basically lock them in place uh, once attached also. So I appreciate that they took the time to include better nuts with them as well. So I went to take the uh, very first wet bolt out of my existing suspension and notice something pretty interesting. So I'm gonna crawl up under there and show y'all what I found and why this project is going to expand from what I had originally planned. Here's where I pushed that bushing out and I have a relaxed the suspension some with a jack here. So don't just think that like I pushed it out and let it drop like that. But when I discovered um, that the bushing was busted inside of here, I lowered it down to make sure I could clean that out because I was hoping to find the remaining pieces. But uh, here's what I found when I pushed this original wet bolt out is this little bit right here is supposed to be a brass cylinder tube meaning a complete circle all the way around that encases this wet bolt right here. And then this is supposed to sit inside of here, again, as a complete tube. Uh, I've very carefully gone through all the paper towels and everything as I was taking this apart. And these are the only pieces that I have, which means that either this bushing was broken when it was put in, uh, when they built the axle, or it has degraded and <laughs> maybe come out as I've greased the Zerk. This camper's only got about probably 11,000 miles on it, so I have a hard time believing that this could disintegrate, but maybe somebody in the comments will leave me some similar experiences. So obviously, this new bolt that comes with it that's longer because that cross factor actually mates a little bit onto here, so it needs to be longer. Uh, this isn't gonna work. I'm gonna have to put, order some uh, brass tubes, press those in as well. And I, I look at online, they go in pretty easy, but it's got me really concerned that if this is the condition of the first one, what am I dealing with with the rest? So of course, again, that should have a brass tube inside of there, clearly not there. I'm very, these, those shackles right there, the original ones from Grand Design, those are Dexter brand. I'm worried, is there brass tubes in there? So I think rather than being surprised, what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and order the Moride shackle upgrade kit. And if I've got this entire thing taken apart, I might as well upgrade um, this link arm right here to the CRE 3000, which is kind of the uh, best in class for this size of camper. I'm gonna double check my wheelbases, make sure I order the right one, but this project is gonna have to pause for a few days while I order these parts. Um, so word to the wise, if you're tackling this, I would at least have the bushings, the brass ones on hand, um, to press into these because again, who knows what the others will look like. I'll take pictures as I bust each one of these out. But since this project scope just expanded, I might as well upgrade the whole suspension here. So instead of just being a Moride cross factor, this is going to become a Moride, a wet bolt shackle upgrade and CRE 3000 upgrade video. So I'll go online, check part fits and everything else, get some parts ordered, and then I'll see you in a couple days. Here's the front side as I've lowered this down, and you can see that there is a bushing in there, but it also already was chipped. I had a lot more hope on this one because the bolt came out a lot easier, but it appears that this bushing also is at least cracked, if not damaged. So we'll have to get the press kit out and pop this guy out. So here's the update of where I'm at. I pressed in those brass bushings into the leaf spring here, the, uh, and I'm starting in the middle. So I'm not, I've already pushed them out of the rearmost and the frontmost, 
and then I just reinserted the wet bolts to kind of hold it in place while I'm working because I'm doing one side and then the other. It's just easier for my setup and I'm doing a lot of work by myself. So pressing these in was very easy. I mean, I was able to slide them in most of the way and then just use a wood block. The manual says you can also use a C-clamp if necessary, but I didn't find that to be necessary. And then I just lifted the CRE 3000 up into here uh, and inserted the bolt. And a key point about these wet bolts, and of course it's getting a little late, so I'm trying to catch kind of the light here. Hopefully it'll show up here in just a second, but there's a hole in these, there it is. There's a hole in there. Of course the camera won't cooperate. There's a hole right there that the grease comes through. And a lot of people on the different forums say you never want that hole to be pointed up or down because that's where the most pressure from the bushing will be at from your holding the weight of your suspension. You always want it kind of facing to the rear or facing to the front. So I'm just gonna set everything to face to the rear. It's just that way I can remember the way I did it in case I run into a problem and I need to adjust it. So that's one key point when setting that bolt through. And then of course you use the outer clam of this uh, X uh, brace there. And the key point is that I've hand started the nut on the backside and I have not torqued it down at all because as you torque it, this bolt is knurled and that'll kind of set in its position and not allow it to rotate at all. But you don't want to do any of that final tightening until you've got everything set. So again, I have inserted the new wet bolt that came with it, the nice hardened one. I have hand tightened the nut behind here and I'm using the outer um, clamshell of this because on the other side, I'll be sticking the inner one into it. So that's definitely something you wanna pay attention to. But you start, uh, even if you're putting your old equalizer back on, you wanna start with the equalizer first and then put back on your shackles uh, just cause it's a whole lot easier to deal with. So now that I've got this on here, I'll be reaching for my shackles and working on getting those set in here as well. I'll point out before you get this two built up, this inner stabilizer little bracket, you should go ahead and install this before you build up too much on there. Again, I've just hand started these nuts because they are indented right there to uh, prevent torque loss. So again, just hand tightening things up to kind of get held in place. And that way this bigger piece won't rotate around on you while you're working. So just kind of tip set it in place like that. Here's the update of where we're at. These shackles right here, one side already has the wet bolts pressed into them, and that's the side with the zerk for greasing. And then the other side is the one with the free shackle and the two nuts. So what I did is start in the center, line these up, got them through, and you have a choice. You can have your zerks to the outside or your zerks to the inside. I went zerks to the inside so I don't have to remove my tires to grease. This one here in the center, and we'll have to be over there as well, the zerks have to be to the outside because of the way that the cross member is designed. The other side has to feed through for tightening purposes. But I feel like that this is sufficiently in between the wheels that it should be fairly easy to get at in grease if I need to. So I think a lot of people have posted online that they've struggled to get things lined up easily. So of course it's very easy in the beginning and I'm just using, I've got jacks on the front jacks on the rear with blocks and I'm just kind of moving up against this leaf spring up and down to kind of pivot it and once I got these two in getting this last one in a little trick is that after you torque these so these nuts are torqued to 50 and of course you don't even have to hold the other side because there's a knurled edge and they're pressed in then you can kind of use this you know this type of wrench right here and you can see that movement that I'm getting right there and so I get the height right and then I move this to kind of get the L direction correct to get it lined up and get that uh, hardened bolt through there. So next step that I'll be doing is adding the second cross member. So again, I'm using the outer shell here. I'm going to go ahead and add the outer shell to there. And I'm not going to torque it. I'm just going to put the nut onto it. And again, since I don't have a helper, I'm going to use this uh, <laughs> supply from the garage to be able to hold that brace as I put it through. So now I've got the wet bolt correct in there. I've got my new shackles on this side and then I'll work my way to the back and again that is a uh, old wet bolt that was in here that I just put in to kind of hold it together and I'll support the suspension on the back side with another jack and pull that out and put in the correct hardened one back there to allow for the cross factor as well. And then we'll get to torquing everything down, give it a grease and this side will be done. And I, 
you know, honestly, I don't think it's been too hard to do this one side at a time. I know that some people say, oh, you got to take everything off. But for me, it's just easier to kind of work one side all the way through based on the number of jacks and stands and supports that I've got. Plus, I just feel better kind of having the other side's tire and wheel on. Uh, if I run into something, though, I'll post an update. Here's the right hand side before I put the tires and wheels back on. So again, new inner brass bearing, and then this is the wet bolt that came with the X-Factor set. And then these are the little brackets that go across here. These get torqued down to uh, 15, and this is supposed to be torqued on the inside there to 40. I have not done that yet. I've just kind of cinched everything up, but I have intentionally left this loose a little bit so that I can move it front or back a little bit because I seriously doubt that these brackets are welded on perfectly. So in order to be able to have some movement to line it all up, I'm intentionally leaving the nut on the inside of this bar and these just a little loose. I mean, it's definitely holding it there, but I can still move it back and forth. What I have done final torque on at 50 pounds is the new upgraded shackles. Of course, you wanna be sure and only apply the torque to the nut side because the bolt, wet bolt side with the zerk on it is pressed in so <laughs> if you just click off on that you could have zero torque on here so you always want to make sure that you are torquing on the side that is introducing the clamping force to the joint which in this case would be this side right here so again I've clicked these off at 50 pounds I haven't greased anything yet either I'm gonna do that at the very end once I have the whole system together just in case for some reason I would have to take it apart or something like that because um, I can't get something lined up so far no issues with that um, but just mentioning that I have not filled these with grease yet. That'll kind of be my last step. And again, I chose to, you can choose to have the Zerks to the outside. Um, that was just a preference for me to not have to be able to remove the tire and wheel to be able to grease these. Um, like I say, I feel like I can pretty reasonably get to this one with the tires on and then we'll just have to see about these front and rear. So I'll update on that here in a little bit. So this basically wraps up this side of it. So now I'm going to put the tire and wheels back on just because I feel a little more comfortable working with a little bit of support on either side and I'll remove from the other side and work on doing the exact same thing on the opposite side. So here I am underneath it and yes there's a loud fan noise but if you were working on this hot a day you'd have fans too. So working on the left hand side is when I'm putting the inner rail inside of here and again it's really important to do the outer rail first and then the inner rail so that it nests inside otherwise you'll be really frustrated my back one's lined up really good and you can see my front one here i haven't put the inner on but it's also lined up pretty good like it's up against the chloroplast but these middle ones really speak to why you would want to do this when i put these two on and i apologize for not getting a video of this but this is such a messy greasy job i just couldn't easily reach for the camera these two bars were bent down. I actually had to insert a piece of wood and jack this up about five inches in order to get these two to line up so that I could get these bolts through and get them tightened down. I got one left to do under here. These are torqued to 40 pounds, but because of the pivot point there, those brackets had been bent in uh, outward. And so because they were bent outward, this bar was down and the one coming from this way was down towards the center. And of course, what that means is that as those brackets are bending, you're increasing your likelihood that the welds may break someday. So I think, again, that this is really kind of a basic thing that should probably be standard on these type of uh, leaf spring bracket campers because there's really nothing controlling the W pitch movement against those brackets and they can get bent very easily. So now that I've realized how far down this was bent and how much I had to jack it up, I'm gonna go back and reconfirm the torque on those wet bolts uh, just to make sure that they're proper given how much I had to jack this up. So some of you thinking about tackling this might be a bit worried about this gas line right here. And I just wanna point out that it's not pinched in any way. You can see the light underneath there. I didn't have to relocate it. I still left it on the inside of the hanger brackets. Seems like a very safe location in general from debris. And again, it's got plenty of clearance on my particular model. I would imagine anybody using the basic Lippert components is pretty similar, but I did not have to relocate the gas line. I have now set all the cross members in, got everything torqued down, 
And now I'm just gonna put the tires back on and that'll wrap this one up. I decided to go ahead and make a coda for the end of this video series where I actually drove this uh, about 200 miles to a campsite and back because I really hate recommending something without actually using it. Um, and what I can say is that probably the worst thing I feel right now in my truck is when we go over like a bridge and there's like the separation joints and that you know sometimes can create a pretty good input into our vehicle even though we have the airbags in the bed of the truck. But uh, this really helped kind of mute some of that impact. And then backing, it also felt a lot more confident. And you know, based on how much these brackets were bent outboard, and I'm certain of that based on how I had to line up this middle uh, set of bars right here, I think it really made a huge difference in terms of the overall stability. But probably the biggest surprise that I wasn't expecting was inside of the camper. So once I'm set up, leveled, everything at the campsite, I'm very sensitive to my kids moving around and how much their movement causes extra motion and rocking in the camper. And I use an extra support stabilizer in the rear, underneath their bedroom area, and of course I use a tripod stabilizer as well. And I've been thinking about like the Steady Fast or JT Strong Arms, those sort of things, just haven't gotten that far yet. But these three braces under here took so much side to side movement out of the camper when it was actually parked. It really surprised me how much less of their motion I felt even with those extra stabilizers. So I was really pleased with that as an added bonus. So overall, I think this is a pretty necessary upgrade. Pleased with it. Obviously ended up being a little bigger scope than I had originally intended, but I was glad to learn about how uh, the bushings were in need of repair and decided to just go ahead and upgrade this whole suspension area. So leave me some comments, ask me some questions. Appreciate the feedback as always, and thanks for watching.